I spent the first six months of 2022 making a VTuber model for my friend who streams on Twitch. He goes by Lupa on there, and throughout 2021, we had this running joke about me working on a VTuber for him off of his persona. Yes, he's a furry, get over it. Uh, but, you know, VTubers were a huge topic of conversation during 2020 and throughout 2021, and this joke about making one for him started turning into a real idea we both actually wanted to do. While I don't actually know too much about the VTuber scene as I don't really follow anyone specifically, I eventually saw, I think it was this uh, clip of a Code Miko interview with Dunky, and uh, it was fucking hilarious. This is so my there's... drunk, drunk, haggard skin. All right, there's more skins, there's other skins. Yeah, this was, this was, this was my nun skin. Oh, okay. All right, that's nice. I protect the Lord. All right, so we got a lot of couple DLC skins available. Yeah. Are you religious, young man? Um. Uh, Would you really. like to join my church? Uh. I don't. Would you like babe, to be this, converted? This is a video game, babe. This is a video this game. Is, this, is, this is just a video game, yeah, babe. This is just a video game. Oh, Leah's coming. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, but basically, uh, that, you know, seeing her very robust avatar and setup and how well everything ran, essentially it got me very excited about the potential of making a VTuber for my friend. Yes, of course it wasn't going to be as good as Code Miko setup, but, you know, just the general idea of a, you know, got me, you know, I was a lot more interested after that. Um, and so we talked more about it and we greenlit it. Uh, I also thought it would be cool, a cool learning experience, um, and was really excited to see my friend just casually streaming with a VTuber avatar that I had made for him. Before I get into the weeds of it, uh, this is a video more about just my experience about making the VTuber, um, not so much about how to make one, as much as we need more videos like that on YouTube after I, after, you know, making this, I can definitely agree with that. Uh, but I will put all the links uh, that I, you know, came across and resources that I used in, uh, while making it in the description below. Um, and uh, yeah, buckle up as I take you through my trials and tribulations because this is going to be a long one. So the first step was to get the ref sheets from Lupa uh, of his character and start modeling. At first I was going to try and model the avatar the way that most people would 3D model a VTuber avatar, which is with traditional hard edge extrusion techniques. Uh, while I have been trained in this technique and I've modeled uh, things with it, um, you know, specifically in Maya a lot, uh, I've never made a full body character with it and wasn't confident I could make something look good that way with this technique. Instead, I decided to go with the only method that I had modeled a full body character before, which was with sculpting. So I jumped into my very legal copy of ZBrush and started trying to conjure up all my knowledge on sculpting for my classes in college. Shout out to my professor Bryce for being awesome at teaching us the basics of 3D modeling. Without his classes uh, and help I received from him and them, I definitely would not have taken on this project. I ended up using Z Spears to create the base of the Otter Man I needed to create. Uh, after that, I started sculpting a bit of the head and quickly realized that I would need to start over. Holy Jesus! What is that? While Lupa's ref sheets helped a lot on what the final model needed to look like, organic sculpting is something I enjoy how to do, but as hinted before, I do not regularly practice. I knew I was going to need to get some better furry-like reference before I continued, which I knew was going to be a somewhat dangerous task. After some hard searching, 
I found some good head on inside profiles of an otter model uh, head by Spy Wolf, as well as some of a full body bear model by the artist Wolfie Nail. Shout out to these artists as this is exactly the kind of reference I needed and was the main reference I used other than Lupa's ref sheet. I then threw the references into ZBrush and started making some really good progress. Throughout the rest of January, then February, and the beginning of March, I worked on the head, body, hands, and feet of the model, getting lots of feedback from Lupa along the way. For the most part, the process went pretty smoothly as I had sculpted each of those things before. The only thing I hadn't done up to that point was model fur, uh, like actual, like having it as part of the model. In terms of modeling the fur, we went with tufts on the shoulders, uh, upper chest, and back of the head. Uh, initially, he had kind of this dude bro mullet going on that I think kind of looked sick, uh, but we toned it down a bit uh, to more closely match Lupa's ref sheet and the vibe he was going for. After that, I started modeling the inside of the mouth. This was the first intimidating element that I had not sculpted before. When it comes to the mouth, you typically make what is called in the industry as a mouth bag, which I think is really gross and also really funny. What I ended up doing, uh, instead of like creating like we saw in the example there of literally putting a actual other object in there to kind of be a boolean in terms of erasing uh, stuff that's already in there and keeping the mouth closed I actually um, I wanted to model the mouth with it open and there's ways to kind of set up blend shapes and such to have it where you can easily open and close it and have your progress like move like with it I I just wanted to open the mouth to work on it I didn't end up going through that so I just kind of kept the mouth open until um, until the end um, of the of the entire process uh, where I uh, used literally the rig to close the mouth um, and save that as the as the new default pose for the model and I, I also just needed to work a lot on like you know the 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 jaw and the lips in general um, so I to open it up basically what I did is I used a mask And I did something like this. And then once I had the mask, I softened it a bit. Then I inverted the mask. Then I used the transpose tool to kind of open up the mouth. Um, and obviously, it's not pretty uh, to start off with. I ended up kind of doing that. And then uh, I started uh, basically carving this part away. And I, I probably, what I ended up doing too is, uh, I probably also tried to put the mask a bit more in the mouth. And then I, you know, I rebuilt up the sides of the mouth. Something along those lines. But yeah, I hope you get the picture. Um, uh, basically, if it was the correct way to do it is uh, a good question. Probably not. Uh, like we saw in the tutorial there, they ended up using kind of like a shape to then remove the part of the mouth instead of uh, manually, uh, uh, you know, sculpting it away. But that's the route that I ended up going with. Uh, I then modeled both the teeth and the tongue as separate elements um, first, then put them in the mouth, and then join them to the model so that it was all together. The result ended up looking way better than I had initially anticipated, and if I'm being honest, was probably my favorite part of the project to work on. Uh, after finishing it, it felt like the quality in the model was elevated significantly. At that point, the only other thing I needed to sculpt uh, was the whiskers. Now, if you were to ask someone who actually does 3D modeling for a living, I'm pretty sure they would tell you that sculpting the whiskers uh, would not be the proper thing to do. 
When it comes to hair uh, and hair related elements, you usually attach those separately to my understanding. But I was only comfortable taking on a certain amount of technical debt for this first iteration of this VTuber model though. Uh, and hair simulation was not something I was ready to dive into yet. So I ended up modeling little sticks that tapered on the end and put them all over the model's face and called it a day. After that, the sculpting slash modeling phase was finished. At that point, the model had 2.6 million polygons on it though. Uh, so I needed to decrease that number somehow uh, so that it can actually be used in a program that you would use a VTuber and face capture in. Uh, there are some ways you can get around retopologizing in ZBrush without losing too much quality, like Z-Remesher. But after several attempts at different techniques, I realized the hard truth. I needed to retopologize the model manually. Or as my girlfriend Leah likes calling it, apologizing to the model. For the uninitiated, basically retopologizing is the process of drawing polygons all over the model and then connecting them together until you have the entire model covered. The bigger the polygons, the less detail preserved, the smaller the polygons, the more detail preserved. Previously, I had done a task like that in Maya. Uh, but when you throw a model with a very large polygon count in there, things can get a little slow, at least on my computer. So I decided to go with Blender as I was getting familiar with it at the time and was interested in if it would run better. Uh, also, Blender is free. While the program didn't slow down, I quickly found out that while you can technically retopologize in Blender, there is no built-in way to do it. There are plugins, uh, but I was determined not to pay money and for some reason do it the janky way. It took me two months to retopologize the model, from early April to the beginning of June. Retopologizing should not take that long. Uh, to be fair, I wasn't able to work on the VTuber as much during this time because work was very busy. Uh, I was also set on the detail of the teeth being highly retained. It was a pain in the ass to work in the mouth area and try to triple the amount of polygons on the teeth compared to most other parts of the body. Uh, just kind of trying to zoom in there without, you know, like putting the camera inside the, you know, model and being able to see it was, it was kind of a mess. But I did it and the results were good. I'm sure there are better ways to accomplish this though, and if I had that plugin, things would have definitely gone a bit faster. <laughs> After I was finally done with retopologizing the model down to 15,867 polygons, I decided to move on to what I consider to be the most fun part of this process, texturing. To texture though, we first need to unwrap and create the UVs for the model. To quickly explain UVs, you basically cut seams around crucial points of the model so that when you lay them out as 2D, they are flat. That way, when you apply them to the model, they do not look warped or stretched. You can set up a checkerboard pattern to see uh, if the cutouts are being warped or not. And UV stands for... wait, what does it stand for? The letters U and V denote the axes of the 2D texture because X, Y, and Z are already used to denote the axes of the 3D object in model space. Huh. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Well, there you go. The more you know. I then brought the model into Substance Painter, the industry standard for texturing, and immediately started having fun painting textures. I ended up buying a brush uh, for Substance Painter here to help with painting on fur made by the artist Eslar. When it came to the eyes, I pulled the art for them from Lupa's ref sheet, uh, upscaled each eye, then stamped them onto each eyeball. It was so satisfying to see the model fully textured. I think that finishing this step got Lupa really excited and maybe helped him realize that he was actually going to get this VTuber model. Now that the model was textured, everything else going forward was essentially uncharted territory. 
I knew that we were going to need to rig the model and I was also doing research on which program we were going to use to actually use the avatar for, you know, being a VTuber. At first, we decided we were going to use Face Rig, or as it is known as now, Animes. Uh, Lupa had bought the old version when it was just called Face Rig uh, before they changed to their newer subscription model. Uh, because everything has to be a subscription model now. But he had the old version, so we thought we'd take a look at it because it, you know, he was a one-time buy and he had it in Steam. So uh, we started looking at the documentation, um, and I rigged the model uh, according to the required naming conventions in the documentation. Uh, I had never manually rigged a model before. But watching tutorials on how to do it in Blender uh, got me through it for the most part. Uh, luckily there is a feature to auto-rig a model in Blender, so I went with that as a base and started adjusting from there. It turns out though there are not as many tutorials on how to get the model working in FaceRig as it is technically now a defunct program. Uh, and my attempts to test it in there were rather unsuccessful. The other main face capture software I had looked into was called VC Face, which was much more documented and free. While FaceRig uses animations for facial expressions, which is something I'm a bit more familiar with, uh, VC Face used something called Shape Keys. Uh, which was yet another new thing I needed to learn to complete this project. But before I got into making the shape keys, I just wanted to see this thing working in some capacity. And I wanted Lupa to see this thing working in some capacity. Uh, I started working on this thing in January of 2022, and it was now July. So I started looking at the documentation on how to bring it into the VTuber program VC Face so we could finally test this thing out some way. So I could just see it working just a little bit. VC Face is an app built uh, in the Unity game engine. So to prepare the model uh, you bring it into, you guessed it, Unity. Uh, I use Unity on a daily basis for work and uh, hobbyist slash indie game projects. So this part of the process uh, ended up being pretty convenient and easy to understand for me. Uh, once I finished preparing the model in Unity, I exported it, imported it into VC Face, and then finally tested it out. Huh. Ah, okay. Hello. Whoa, look at him. Hello, I'm Lupa. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he looks a little scary, but he, he looks great. He, yep, it looks perfect. There's nothing wrong with it at all. The, he looks the, pretty fucking good, The man. face textures are perfectly working. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look at the hair though. Woo! I don't know. It's and, all floppy and, and so is his right ear. And the right <laughs> ear specifically, but not the left <laughs> ear. No, the left one. The left ear is floppy. Uh, okay. Uh, the good news is I know how to fix all of this, so. Dude, it looks great. Yeah, yeah. It looks absolutely amazing. I just wanted to show you it before you go into your tournament. Dude, he looks so cool. Thank you. You're welcome. We're, we're, okay. get, we're getting really close. Seeing this working in some capacity, as well as getting Lupa's reaction, got me excited to finally get a full first working version of this avatar ready for him. We had also set a due date for myself, July 18th, which meant I only had two days left. I immediately went and fixed the problem with the face textures, the bones on the rig for the face so that I could more easily pose it, the weight painting for the earring and the ears so that they didn't stretch weirdly or bounce weirdly, then finally got to figuring out those shape keys. To allow the mouth to animate when you are talking, you need to create a pose for each different pronunciation of a vowel and such, uh, which for my artist friends is literally based around moving individual vertices uh, at least in Blender. 
I essentially cheated this by utilizing the rig I had to create a pose, then save that pose to a new shape key, then reset the pose to default, and repeat. This was probably my biggest blocker in the project, and I was very relieved once I figured it out. After testing and revising all night going into the 18th of July, that morning I did my final test and I was satisfied. All right, here it is. He's talking now. We can move around, the earrings swinging around, the hair swinging around. We can, we can look around, I can blink. I can blink individually. Woo! I then finally got some sleep. Lupa was pretty busy that day as he had signed himself up for way too many OSU tournaments, but the next day we got together on Discord and I helped him get it up and running on his computer. Okay. There, there he is. There he is. There he hey, is. Look, you gotta look at the um, things on the right side, what, what's allowed, what's not allowed. Oh, what the f- <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> So that's just on the VTuber like preset thing. Like you have to yeah. say if it's allowed or not allowed. Yeah, so I true. just thought it would be funny. That would that is funny. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta select your camera. Um, we're gonna rock with that. Oh, hey yo! <laughs> pizza here. Hey yo, the pizza here. There he is. The blinking isn't working. Uh, just like move your face around a couple of times and like blink, like kind of like do a bunch of dramatic expressions, and it'll eventually figure itself out. Wow! 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 <laughs> wow! 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 This is freaky. <laughs> this is really freaky. It keeps thinking my eyes are closed. I think I probably just need to like so so recalibrate it or something. Yeah, go ahead and click reset position. Yeah. We're also gonna mess around with the um, the settings. This one? No, oh, wait. This one. Yeah. Wink, I'm su clicking. Wink support. Wink support. Ah, there she is. Yeah. Ah, oh, wow. I don't know why wink supports in its own thing, but yeah. Hey, there you go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so fucking cool. Yeah. Um, why are my eyes closed? Open. I swear I'm awake, man. <laughs> so, do you, what you you what you can do is play with the tolerances a little bit on these things. So, uh, if you go to the settings, I can't see if the eyes are working. Go ahead and just reset the position really fast. Okay. Um, so I, they need to be turned up. So scroll up just a little bit on the left and turn up the gaze strength. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, cool. Um, you could turn up just a bit more maybe. Yeah, and then just turn down the sensitivity just a little bit. Okay, now, now try it. Oh yeah, much better. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I see what you're saying. Just fill in with these. I guess yep. those. I'm I'm glad you're here for those because those uh, I can't really do myself. Yeah, I had to record my screen and then watch <laughs> it back to actually see. If Yo, it my eyes are open, bro. <laughs> yeah. So then you can change like the blink sensitivity and shit like that. Uh, scroll all the way to the bottom. Anime, anime job on yeah so this is gonna be a personal preference thing go ahead and turn it on so what this is gonna do now is like when you open your mouth without talking it will open your mouth oh okay and so it kind of like it's basically using like a combination of like lip syncing and like tracking your face that jawbone like and trying to like smooth put it all together so I personally liked it. It's up to you. Yeah, I think it's a lot better. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot more. Okay. This cool. is cool. There's a lot of like fiddling with stuff. Yes. Yes. For sure. 
Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's mainly the stuff in the settings that I wanted you to at least uh, look at at first. And so the light settings here, you can turn up the intensity of the sun and the intensity of the ambient light. So the sun is like... What? <laughs> 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 oh, God. Okay. So, so that's okay. like the spotlight, and then the ambient is like your... Oh, cool. Yeah, Let so go. the shadows, I was also going to have you turn those on so now your mouth isn't lit up, like, weirdly. I'm assuming it obviously puts more stress on the computer, but uh, yeah, I probably won't have it on in. It depends on what game you're playing. Like if I you're guess, playing yeah, Osu, you're fine. There's no reason to have shadows on an Osu. No, no, no. Yeah. You can have Osu shadows on the Osu. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I'm saying if you're playing like a like a triple A like. 3D oh, graphics you're saying, heavy you're game. You're talking computer strain. Okay, yeah. I was thinking just like uh, how it looked. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah, up to you. Yeah, you're probably right. That's up to you. Um, but yeah, and then the ambient light, I think you checked that out, right? That's just like the overall, like, I that's kind of like the, the, like the gamma almost. I mean, not the gamma, but yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh, he's ascending. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's so cool. Yeah, and I can I make it, it. I can make it more dramatic if you want. Um, or like not necessary for now. Yeah. Just because. Uh, I um, I also like hope you like that your hands are curled into yourself. Um, oh God! I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can gross. you can you can fix Ooh. that in this. <laughs> yeah. Shut button. No, it's not arm angle. Arm angle. <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah, god. yeah. Oh god, okay. <laughs> oh lord. Lupa, it's, yeah. it's majestic Lupa. It's Squidward, it's handsome, handsome Lupa. <laughs> this is so Yeah, nice. so that's, um... Dude, this is so fucking amazing. Oh, that's good though. Yeah. Let me just turn that. <laughs> to infinitely lower. Zero. Perfect. Oh wow, it still does it. That's interesting. I would have assumed it just stops blinking. Yeah. I'll just keep it there, honestly. That's probably as good as it'll get. Yeah. Maybe I just could turn off blinking. I don't really care about matching my eye my blinks. Yeah, it's whatever you want. I, I would yeah. I would set the wow looking down to auto blink. Uh I mean oh, it depends yeah, on okay. your webcam, but um, well, cam is pretty mid for my okay. memory. It's not bad, but it's just middle of the pack. Right. That's so cool. This is amazing. Thank you so much. This You're welcome, man. Coming. You're welcome. My only request is that we uh, need to play uh, on stream uh, a round of Halo I, again. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down for that. <laughs> It was so awesome to see him use it, test it out, and get his reaction. And just for him to see the wheels turning in his head of the potential of what he could do with it. And with that, this story pretty much comes to a close. So it was sort of post-mortem uh, or in retrospective of things I learned and could have done differently. Uh, I definitely should have used the retopologizing plugin for Blender. Uh, that probably would have cut the time I spent on read topoing in half. Another thing that I should have done more was utilize my resources. As in, go to my fellow animators or my past professor Bryce and ask them questions on how they tackled some of the problems that I ran into. Uh, for example, the mouth bag should have been something they could have been able to answer questions about, like, you know, if to test the tongue or not and such. Uh, having to read apologize the model to have way more vertices in the mouth than the rest of the body to get more detail and if I was doing something wrong there or not, etc. Another thing I could have done was also think ahead for certain tasks. Uh, for example, when it came to the UVs, uh, I should have looked into whether Substance Painter, VC Face, and Unity had support for UDIMs which are basically kind of like the different sectors that you would place a set of uh, UV islands in. Uh, so while there was support for it in Substance Painter, uh, there, was, there wasn't there was in Unity. 
Uh, as a result, I had to do a weird workaround to get the textures assigned properly. You know, I, I basically had to just do some like manually name changing and such. I would not have had to do that if I wasn't stubborn and wanted to try new technology just because. Uh, last thing I can think of was to make sure to hear back from the client before continuing. Uh, I, I did a good job at this. Um, you know, I, was, I, I got a lot of feedback from Lupa, uh, but there were some times where I was too excited to move on to the next step, like when I wanted to texture, I just jumped into Substance Painter and started texturing. Uh, but we both realized uh, after that I didn't have the earring modeled. So I had to go back and model it, then unwrap the UVs for the whole model again, uh, then re-import it uh, into Substance Painter and start the texturing process over. Um, luckily, I didn't lose too much progress. I hadn't made a ton of progress texturing, um, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but it's still worth mentioning. A couple of the resources I didn't mention that I used when telling my story, uh, one of them was the CATS plugin. Uh, for Blender. Uh, it's used for helping create VTuber and VR chat models in general. Uh, many of the buttons on it can be found in other parts of Blender, uh, but it kind of just all consolidates them to one panel that makes some things easier. Um, there was a button on it, you know, the button to create a shape key from the current pose that I was talking about earlier. That button was on there and I couldn't find it elsewhere, so I'm pretty glad that I was I got suggested from a uh, tutorial I watched to use that because it really came in handy. Uh, once again, all the resources I used will be in the description. So I hope you enjoyed my post-mortem about my experience in making a VTuber avatar. I learned a lot while making it and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. The whole thing was worth it to me because I think it's really cool to be able to say that I made a VTuber model for my friend in my spare time for him to use on Twitch. You would probably need to pay me at least 10 grand to work on another one right now though. Not because I actually think the quality of my work is anywhere near that price, I just don't really anticipate wanting to work on another one soon. Yes, while it would probably take literally two thirds or even half the amount of time it took to make this first one here, um, I have other types of personal projects that I want to work on. On top of still contributing to an indie game studio with fellow colleagues multiple times a week. So yeah, I'm, I'm good for now. Uh, but I don't regret this project at all and I'm here for him in terms of upgrading it down the line or making improvements and such. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this one, everyone. Thank you so much for watching through this uh, whole video um, and my experience on making a VTuber model for my friend, and I'll see you guys in the next one.